Give me one surprise player you think will start for the 49ers this year. Like someone that people aren't thinking about at this point. It's got to be, it feels like it's got to like, be like the on. Spencer Burford of this year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's got to be someone on the offensive line. I don't know. It's it's hard for me. I don't have enough like semblance on someone on the offensive line. I know it's going to be someone on the offensive line, but I don't have anyone. I think I'm going to go. Sakel. Nick Sakel. Nick Sakel. Be, That's my guess. I think, he's, I think he's going to, I think he's going to beat out Colton Kivitz for that right tackle spot. What is he? He I does that? Say. I thought he was more of an interior guy. Okay, that's that's he's good. Six, that's six. I he's six six. He's a little bit taller. I oh, think you're gonna try to teach in, on the interior, he there. may have some leverage issues at, at guard. I will see. Yeah, because you're not gonna have someone compete with Brendel. You already locked him up for the next two years. Right. I mean, I know it's a four year contract, but it's essentially yeah. two years. Yeah. So it's not like you're gonna have a compete. And Feliciano's there. the backup at center, so you don't need someone to learn the, the position. But uh, he, he could play, play guard. guard. I think but I mean, Feliciano these six foot six dudes, I feel like you're a little bit more high cut. I'd rather, I think, probably more suited to play tackle. But I don't know. Yeah, so I think I mean plus again like Felix Sano, Felix Sano can play guard too. He plays fine in both positions, center guard. So you have someone who could swing both and be that filler gap. And in case they want to do that weird rotation, is Feliciano going to start? Or hard? No, I don't think he's going to start. I think I he's, he's going to start either. I think he's just there for like a contingency again for Burford. Um, right tackle, he's the main backup at left guard, le at center, and right guard. I think the main backup, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That. Um, yeah. right tackle, yeah, because obviously it's McKivitz and it's that other guy they say they brought from the Colts or something like that. I, the guy they signed that was, that was Matt someone prior, yeah, but he's got like a, a vet minimum contract Austin for one Bryant year. Like, like I, I don't think he's gonna make the team. Oh, yeah, Austin Bryant, I don't know, Austin Bryant's gonna make the team. Cleveland Farrell, I think Cleveland Farrell is gonna start. Oh, I think Drake Jackson will, will be a third down pass rusher, but I, I think right, Cleveland yeah, Farrell is yeah, going to be yeah, their their. Sense. No, that makes sense. Cleveland Farrell, their rusher, one, he does have a strength as a run defender. Run he defender, just can't rush the pass to save his life. He has zero bend right. and speed at all. Right, even right. his power is a little lacking, but for some reason he just doesn't. He does enough technical things as a run defender. Uh, I think my guy I was going to go with, and it's more of bold, is Samuel Womack over Isaiah Ooh. Oliver. Even though they oh, signed him, but then again, they didn't spend too much on Oliver, so there's not much of the demand to put him as a starter. I'm just thinking, like, one is, are we sure he's going to be healthy? Because he came back last year, and his first game was against the Niners. So who knows if there's going to be something on that end? It's true. Number two, it's like, what if Womack just falls out and Oliver is just not what they thought they were? Like, it's just not what it's, it wouldn't be the first time the Niners signed someone is like, this is not what we thought we were getting, or even any team. And then Womack just comes out there. I just wonder if, if the Niners. Like, they're so invested on Oliver, if they just say, all right, buy Womack to the nickel, we're just going to put you in the outside. Because they did play him in the outside in the relief of Lenore or someone at some point last year. And I was like, what are they doing? <laughs> oh, no, Ward. I remember Ward went out for a minute, and they put him out there for Ward. And that's that guy was like, oh, God, another player they're going to put out of position. So, I mean, just keep your players in position. But I think that's some, that's the only thing I, I can feel like I could talk about, like, in terms of Womack over Oliver, because he can play the run, and they know he has something there with him. Yeah, and then the final spot where the Niners have a question mark at their uh, starting spot uh, at, at, is linebacker. It could be Marcelino McCrary Ball. It could be a rookie. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a rookie as a number three linebacker. I mean, Dre Greenlaw started as that Sam linebacker as a rookie. They could take another guy in round five. Like They could take the next Dre Greenlaw. Yeah, because I remember when Greenlaw was drafted – there was like a lot of hype around him and it was about like his speed or something like that. Like it's just like, yeah, there's a lot of hype around this Drake Greenlaw cat. And then all of a sudden he, he makes his debut started with Quan Alexander gone. It's like, Jesus, this guy is good. <laughs> Way better good. than Quan immediately so fast. It's just the speed. Yeah. The difference was so evident from like day one of the start. It's yeah. like, my God, you need to keep this guy out there. Even if he whiffs, it's like, all right, just keep teaching him control every week. He's teaching him control. Because, I mean, the, God forbid, he might not whiff on the next one. He's going to lay his dude out. And he laid so many people out on his rookie year. So, yeah, that's someone they're going to draft, right? The linebacker, at least one. I would you think need, so. You need to restock uh, the, cupboard, the cupboard. And then the final surprise player who will start has got to be Sam Darnold. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That AK be. Alex Smith 2.0. <laughs> Can't Kyle Shanahan turn him into that, Grant? I don't know. It seems like he's got to do two things. C convince Sam Darnold to stop turning the ball over and just be a game manager and convince Sam Darnold that he's good. And I don't know that he can do that. We'll see. Like Jim Harbaugh did that for Alex Smith, but it's I don't know that Kyle has that personality to be like. And I, I feel like McDaniel did it for Tua. He went to Miami and was like, hey, man, I know Brian Flores told you you're trash. You're really hmm. good. Let's watch this two-hour video of you doing good things. Like, 
I don't know that Kyle does that for players. I think Sam needs it. Like Sam might be better off going to freaking Miami. I honestly, he he probably should have went to Miami. I don't know if they're interested in him though. Yeah, no, it's probably over. I still wish the Niners would have got Jacoby Brissett after I saw what he got for. I was like, that's it. That's all you got for him. But I digress. I'm more um, excited about Dorian Thompson Robinson if they draft him. Like that's a guy. Of course like, you if, are. If Brock Purdy. Let me to be like if Brock Purdy can have success on the Niners just because he had a lot of experience in college. Like that's another four year starter. Like he's just as physically gifted as Brock Purdy. Like he can check it down to freaking Christian McCaffrey. Two. He's projected day three, right? That guy, DRT. Yeah. yeah. I think the higher that the, the Niners dropped a quarterback. DTR. Which DTR, DR. Sorry. Oh, I don't watch you. Like <laughs> sorry. That. I only watched you. USC this year like that. Um, That's true. If they, I was thinking about this once I saw that they got that visit last night and I was like, okay, they, they, they did not even a visit. They, they worked them out. And I was like, okay, I, I didn't think it was going to be, you know, they're going to try to look at someone that prominent. I mean, is he that prominent, that guy? But whatever. The point is, depending on where they draft a quarterback, it's going to be very telling where Lance, what they, where Lance's like future is really going to hold out. Like if they draft him like late in like a fifth, sixth, seventh, okay. okay. No, even, yeah, fifth, sixth, seventh, or fourth. But if they go with like a, one of their day two picks or even, you know, God forbid, trade up again in the second, third, that's going to be like, wow, where, where's Lance fit then? I mean, <laughs> You're going, you're, depending on where they draft a quarterback, is going to be indicative of how they're looking at Lance, essentially, in this case. I think I think that's when they can try to – if they try to keep a draft a quarterback, then I think I can see Lance being a midseason trade. Right? I mean, if they're, if they're actually taking a day out of their busy schedule to work out Dorian Thompson-Robinson, like, isn't that a waste of time unless you're in the market for a quarterback? You already have three. Confident, right? <clears throat> at the end, remember he said at the annual meeting, he said – Someone mentioned about, oh, yeah, drafting quarterback, adding quarterback. He's like, yeah, fourth quarterback is like probably something we're going to do, but it's like, you know, how much On time are you going to allocate it yeah. just for a camp yeah. body? You, you, you won't get reps in camp. You literally won't get reps in camp. You can warm up. You can hand, you can help the running backs, you know, warm up and hand off. But, like, once it's team drill time, you don't get any th- zero throws. You get zero, so, zero throws. So that's a tough one. So at that point, if you're going to go for someone like that who can actually, okay, this is someone we can actually probably work with like him, then – wouldn't you just go for like a sixth or seventh round pick again and just pass someone as the filler until Brock comes and maybe you're lucky you could put him in the practice squad? Because you were drafting. Yeah, I mean, but last year, him, last year they took Brock Purdy with the literally the last pick in the draft and were afraid that they couldn't get him on the practice squad. I, I still to this yeah. day believe that's why he made the 53 man roster, not because no, they yeah, saw true. it. They just were afraid that he wouldn't make it to the practice squad. No, a thousand percent. It wasn't that yeah. afraid. How much did it really show in the preseason game? I mean, maybe there's something that scouts and coaches could see that's like, okay, yeah. But it is a quarterback, you know. He's like he's a pocket quarterback who can move a little bit. But I mean, everyone would have probably just put, that would have been something on on someone's list to add. So yeah, you always want to protect someone. So I I think essentially, I mean, the 49ers are so headstrong on these three that they have now. Then whoever they're gonna add like the late pick, it's like you know, this, do we care? Like let's just add someone, see what he got or whatever, or not. And then I don't know. But I do think if it can, if it goes as high as like a fourth. I, I think that's when it's like, okay, Lance, it's, it's an eyebrow razor, but, but especially a third, but like a fourth or a third, I think that's when it's like, hmm, it's interesting. Pay, so I would say pay attention to where the Niners draft a quarterback because I didn't really put it too much in my mind about like, adding in another quarterback. It's like, oh, maybe I'll just add one on the fly or on the sly, and they're just going to look somewhere else to, to reload, but that's the one that's going to be a little bit of a telltale sign. Yeah, I love how people say that they saw it with, with uh, Brock Purdy in preseason. Here were Purdy's numbers in preseason. He looked ugly. 30 of... 30 of 49, that's a 61 completion percentage. 346 yards, that's 7.1 per attempt. One touchdown, one pick, four sacks, and 80 rating. Okay, so like, I mean, I'm not saying he was bad, but, I, you know, there, it was a little uneven. Meanwhile, Trey Lance completed 68% of his throws. His yards per attempt was 8.8. He threw one touchdown, no picks, and his quarterback rating was 116. So it's a little bit of revisionist history there, that Brock Purdy. I mean, I... I actually felt at the time that if the Niners had cut Brock Purdy, he would have made it to the practice squad. I mean, his preseason wasn't that special. I, Nate Sudfeld's quarterback rating was was better. And we could all see that Brock Purdy was better and more promising than Nate Sudfeld. But I don't think that Purdy did anything in the offseason that had another team being like, oh, man, we got to have that guy on our 53-man roster as our third-string quarterback. If he was that good, they wouldn't have signed Jimmy then. Then it's like, all right, if Trey's bad, we got Brock. I mean, every single team passed on him in the draft. 
he goes in the preseason and posts, a, posts an 80 rating, and you're telling me some team is like, you know what, we were totally wrong about Brock Purdy. Let's put him on our team right now. It was never going to happen. The Niners could have put him on their practice squad if they wanted, but they didn't want to risk it in retrospect. Smart. Because Nate said that's dumb. Undrafted free agent. There's no way. Dude, in training camp, he looks bad. Is the ball He essentially he was, was an undrafted free agent. The entire league could have drafted him and said no, and the Niners Basically. were like, okay, we could either sign you as an undrafted free agent or take you right now. I mean, it's the same thing. They probably save a little money. If they had waited to get him as an undrafted free agent, there would have been a bidding war. He would go to the highest bidder. He actually might have made more money as an undrafted free agent than as un, than as Mr. Irrelevant. Isn't that kind of funny? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's true. I think it, the, it was the Niners saving money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, do we want him now? It's like, at that point at the, at the draft, right, you're just grabbing whoever the hell. It doesn't matter. And the Niners don't you know, they talk about priority free agents, right? Like the, the priority UDFAs, there's, they usually have four, five, six teams interested, and there's a little tiny bid so the Niners avoided it yeah, it's Got like a little more of a kicker than if you get drafted right I, I don't I don't know if teams were looking at Brock Purdy as someone they were going to bid on after the draft but maybe they were